Welcome back again to the Magic Tree, and this time we're headed to the last level of the swamp. I don't find this next level to be particularly difficult, and I find it even less difficult now that we have the, uh, the fourth armor unit and our new mask ability. This is an area I didn't platform up before because I said you would see it later, and now is later. There's a single skeleton up here, but we can easily jump past him. Once again, we want to immediately turn around. There are two skeletons back here, but they do drop some coins for us, which is very important. Not the most healthy extra, but coins are better than nothing. There are three water zombies here, but with our extended sword and the fact that it's, you know, imbued with lightning again, they're no issue. There's a room right next to us that we could unlock to get another lightning sword, but that would be a waste. That crow had that coming. And if we manage to jump up these vines, there's a really well hidden one up in it for us. This jump is really tricky though. Gotta jump around this whole tree. It's a very odd shape to jump around, but we did it. And there's a hidden chest right here with some armor, and you know what that means. It's mask time. Now this level isn't particularly difficult even without the mask. But with it, any semblance of difficulty is entirely eradicated. Hey, a key. We're gonna run really far ahead and deal with this ghost up here. That way we don't have to waste a shield throw on it. This level does have a lot of ghosts in it. You can say that about it. This starting area also has two more hidden keys for us. One of them is up here on top of this stump. But of course, from on top of the stump, we can jump up here. And then the crow will finally attack us. But there's also some money across the other building if we manage this jump. And who would have thought it but another key at the end of this walkway. Shame we're uh, all full on keys. But there's no reason to open any of these, these locked doors. There's really nothing in them for us. I really like this starting area because of all the neat little places you can get to that you wouldn't think you could. That's one of my favorite things about exploring this game. There's so many jumps that you wouldn't think you should make. There's another ghost. We are going to have to waste our shield on this one. But our shield's in pretty good shape, all things considered. Probably has something to do with that mask power-up we got. And the fact that we now have four, four separate slots of armor. Also, in case you didn't notice, we can suck up coins through the caskets without breaking them. It's a minor detail, but it's still neat and another ghost. This level is just chock full of ghosts. There are so many. Right here I get overexcited and attack the water zombie twice in a row. Should have waited and backed up. But that's only one hit so far. I'm sure we can survive that. And I always forget that there's a single zombie right here because he's so useless right there. Maybe he would be the last straw if you had lost all your health to that point. There's a crocodile before we actually reach the platform up here, but by coming to the left we can avoid him. And just a single axe throwing enemy is no big deal, as has been previously discussed. If we're quick we can jump up and hit the shield enemy while he's distracted, but I'm not sure if I manage that. I do not. At least we have plenty of shield to block with. The start of the next area has relatively few enemies and a lot of goodies. But there is a green ghost. The green ghost takes control of our body and reverses our controls as well as makes us move slower. Not a good idea to, to get caught by those guys. Especially when we have an enemy around. Granted, it was only one zombie, but that's still an enemy. After we get these spirits and some hidden coins, there's an armor power up, which of course means our mask will activate. And this next area up here is supposed to be a gauntlet. It's supposed to be really difficult to get through, but we're just going to trounce it. 20 seconds may not seem like a long time, but it's plenty of time to get through here without getting touched by any of the enemies. 
Of course we won't be able to pick up any of the chests either. But this is one situation where we have enough money not to worry about that. Besides, did you see how many crocodiles we passed on our way here? At least two. That's double the normal. Double. This next part routinely reminded me of Frogger when I was younger. The water is instant death, and a single slip can mean a restart. Also, these heads are rather slippery. If you don't land dead center, you're going to fall off. Fortunately, the platforming in this game has never really been an issue for me. It just controls so perfectly that I've rarely been skittish about any of the jumps. Except maybe in the fourth world, where they add something to mix it up a little. And in here is a brief breather before we do some more platforming. I mean, I guess it's not really supposed to be a breather, but with our lightning sword it is. You might have heard there's an enemy spawner up here. Having watched my brother recently play through this level before I decided to play the game myself, I can confirm that the platforming here is meant to be genuinely difficult. Because I've seen him slip off these heads more than once. But as long as you wait for the right set of platforms, I don't think it's that bad. If we're really quick, we can hit this guy as soon as we land. Especially with our longer sword, it should be easy. No problem. And there's the end of the level right up there. There's a single axe enemy, and he does unfortunately hit me. Nearly got knocked into the water, but we didn't. And there's an easy extra life in it for us. I think all our power-up slots might actually be full right now, which is a little surreal. I don't think that's ever happened to me before. Anyway, that's it for this level.